What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, I'm going to try to jump right into this. Uh, I want to try to get my intros to be a little bit shorter, save all the talking for afterwards. <laughs> but um, if you want to go ahead and find me on social media platforms, this is where you can find me at. Uh, you can find me on Twitch, you can find me on Instagram, and you can find me on uh, Twitter. So I will start doing streams again on uh, Twitch. Um, I just recently started playing the Phoenix Wright trilogy that was released on steam and i'm about to finish the first game but since i started that before i did any streaming i'm gonna start streaming the second game on so once i get done with the first game i'm gonna go ahead and move on and start streaming the second game so be sure to be on the lookout for that if you want to know when that's going to happen i will notify you on uh twitter and you know then you'll know where to find me so or at least when to know when the schedule kicks up again but uh, anyway let's go ahead and jump into this this video is Best of Richard Dawkins, Amazing Arguments and Clever Comebacks Part 1. This is the Agonton Foundation again. Uh, these are the same people that I got the video for Sam Harris and uh, Matt Dillahunty and uh, Christopher Dawkins. So if you want to go ahead and watch the other parts to these videos, because there's more than just one part to each person, uh, go to their channel, uh, watch their videos, subscribe to them like their videos if you enjoy their content of course and if you haven't seen this video before I react to it I strongly suggest you go and watch it now and then at this point hopefully you've come back and have already seen it <laughs> um, let's go ahead and jump into it and see what it has to offer because each person has their own style I want to see I want to get a good feel for his style I've already seen him before but you know I do not believe that religion is the root of all evil. Thank you, Channel 4. <laughs> Screw Channel 4. Religion is the root of quite a lot of evil, but that didn't make for a very catchy title. <laughs> I just want to briefly reply to Dr. Spivey a couple of points. He says we're fighting a losing battle because uh, religion is a part of our human nature. I hear Spivey, I think of Dan well, Spivey the wrestler. for yourself. It's not a part of mine, and it's not a part of the great majority of my friends in universities uh, in England and the United States and elsewhere. He also said, if we had no religion, how would we do without King's College Chapel, the Sistine Chapel, etc.? Well, you know, artists have to make a living and in the time when the Sistine Chapel was built and its ceiling was painted, you know who had the money. Artists such as Michelangelo had to go where the patronage was. We shall never know the ceiling that Michelangelo might have painted if he had been commissioned to paint um, the Museum of Science, for example. We shall never know what Haydn's evolution oratorio might have sounded like yeah we would it would have been girls girls they didn't have the bikinis back then but they would have been in something pantaloons whatever the hell it was it would have, that it would have been girls we know that yeah I'm just kidding on. <laughs> or beethoven's mesozoic symphony <laughs> i face two questions firstly is religion true and second, is it necessary for human psychological welfare or something of that sort? If it isn't true, then for anybody to maintain that somehow humans need it and you're wasting your time trying to get rid of it, what an amazingly patronizing and condescending thing to say. We intellectuals, of course, know that it's not true, but... Is this shocking? But all those... All those poor people out there, they need religion. I mean, what a condescending thing to say about, about all those people. Either it's true or it's not. And I have enough respect for people to say that if it's not true, people will reconcile themselves to that and will not find any uh, need for it. Now, I was asked a specific question, is, there, is it in the genes? Is there some uh, Darwinian reason for uh, religiosity? Maybe there is but that doesn't bear in the slightest degree on whether it's true. I care about whether it's true. I also care, as a Darwinian, 
about the origin of it, and I'm interested in the origin of it, and I'm inclined to agree with the um, in implied suggestion of the questioner that it may be that religion itself has no advantage, but it may be that it's a byproduct of some other psychological disposition which does. But that is an entirely separate question from whether it's true, and I don't like it when people say, oh, humans need it, or we have it built into us in our genes, or Darwinian natural selection has built into it, therefore that somehow validates it. Of course it doesn't validate it. It merely says that it's been built into us by natural selection, just as all sorts of other probably disagreeable things have been built into us. Doesn't mean we can't try to cure ourselves. Right, okay, can I? Yep. Um, when he says that it was something that's likely built into us through natural selection, he's not saying the, the religion itself. Uh, he's not saying Christianity or something is built into us or whatever religion you happen to follow. What he's saying is the idea of finding some type of answer, usually through God or magic or something, some way of explaining something that's unknown that we can't verify if it really exists or not. We kind of rationalize our, we kind of rationalize and just say that it does as like a placeholder almost because it's like humans we naturally we have this ability or this need to want to answer stuff even if we don't know the answers like we don't know what would happen if we do a certain thing but we'll go ahead and say okay well this will end up happening even though we don't really have any evidence that that likely will happen it's just that it's something that helps us out <laughs> as far as survival back in the day you you go into that dark wood wooded area that you don't know what's in there. Yeah, it, it, the truth is you don't know what might happen. You could go in there and anything could happen. But also the possibility is that you could go in there and get messed up by a goddamn saber wolf or whatever the fuck happens to be in those damn woods. And that's what keeps us alive. <laughs> okay, we, we just assume that it's a saber wolf in there. So just stay out of there. Otherwise, you will get killed by a saber wolf. Um, but as far as the religion and god and stuff like that it i'm not sure like it, it seems maybe we do it because we're just uncomfortable with the idea that there's something like so big and vast out there that we just can't explain like the idea of the stars and the sky and the sun and stuff like that like all that stuff is out there it's there we can see it and it's something that we have no idea what it is and how and how, or how we can control it, and I'm, I'm thinking in the mind of somebody that's living in like the BC right now. The idea that this vast thing that happens every single day routinely, and we can't explain what's going on with it. Like, it like humans, especially in the early days, I could see having like an uncomfortable idea of okay, well, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. And we have to have an answer. So God, magic, whatever else, tends to be the thing that people are put in there. And at some point, some people just got naive and stuck with it. Just Even when the answer did come out. I have experienced plenty of things which could be called transcendental. I've experienced the feeling of almost mystical wonder that I get when I look up at the stars, look up at the Milky Way, uh, contemplate the galaxies receding from us, listen to a Schubert quintet, uh, read a sonnet of Shakespeare. These are all things which only a human mind is capable of doing. So may I ask you? Let, 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 let. Okay, sorry. Only a human mind is capable of doing that. And a human mind is capable of doing those things because the human mind has been put together in the brain put. as a highly complicated organization that has evolved over some four billion years of evolution, putting together nervous systems. It is a stunning achievement of evolution to have put together the human brain, the human brain that is capable of being moved by such things. I yield to no one in my capacity to be moved by what you call the, the transcendental. What I do not do, however, is to indulge in mystical nonsense about it being there before there were brains or the equivalent of brains. A quote from Kurt Wise who is an American geologist. He studied geology at Harvard, no less, under Stephen Jay Gould, no less. And he was set for a 
a good career as an academic geologist, which all his life he had desperately wanted. The problem was, it came from within, it was his religious upbringing, his firewall of faith. And he couldn't reconcile the two, his scientific education with his religion, and he literally got a pair of scissors and went right through the Bible and cut out every verse that would have to go if he accepted his scientific education. And it, in the end, he decided there was nothing left of his Bible. He therefore tossed out science and said, and from then on, he said, um, with that in great sorrow, I tossed into the fire all my dreams and hopes in science. And he goes on, I am a young age creationist because that is my understanding of the scripture. As I shared with my professors years ago when I was in college, if all the evidence in the universe turns against creationism, I would be the first to admit it, but I would still be a creationist because that is what the word of God seems to indicate. Here I must stand. Okay. If religion can do that to a highly educated Harvard geologist, just think what it can do to an average school child or student. Yeah, because most of the time religion is something that tends to be brought upon you when you're a kid. So a lot of times your rational, like your ability to rationally explain things and understand things hadn't even developed yet. So they put that stuff in your head and then by the time you are able to rationalize stuff, you have already had the foundation built that like God is a thing like it, it exists there is no like you don't even bother to put it through the the mechanism that you use to find the truth because you already in your mind it's true it's just like a given oh yeah that's obviously true the thing that makes people go from being believers to non-believers is when you're able to convince them to take that belief and put it through that system of skepticism if there's somebody that happens to do that because if they don't if they believe in like fallacious arguments and things like that it doesn't matter how many times you try to get them to question it they're going to end up falling into some type of fallacy that's going to re uh affirm their beliefs but if you can get them to get uh understanding of how skepticism works and the proper way to put something uh through the uh critique and stuff like that that'll make them find the truth once you get them to do that, then you have to try to convince them to put the God claim in there. Because a lot of times, even if they do believe in the whole skeptic, skeptic mechanism, just sometimes out of fear or the idea that their whole foundation of understanding something could be rocked or disturbed in some like huge way, they probably wouldn't even put God into that discussion. So you have to try to convince people to first put it into the discussion and then you know hopefully that can lead them to you know coming up with something more rational which the rational answer should be that it's not true but at the same time it's not false we don't know there's no way of proving one way or the other i mean i know a lot of people will be like well obviously you can uh make exceptions for it because i mean that's like saying that there that pixies exist like you can we can pretty much stamp the 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 claim that pixies don't exist so we can kind of do the same for god but that's at the same time you're kind of doing the same thing that they're doing you're you're going all the way without the actual answer now i know the likelihood of it happening are in like really 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 low <laughs> but you can't say it's impossible only way to say it's impossible is if you absolutely know and we don't that's just how it works The, the scientists that I respect are scientists who work hard to be understood, to use language clearly, to use words correctly, and to understand what is going on. We have been subjected to a kind of word salad of scientific jargon used out of context with in inappropriately, apparently uncomprehendingly. Um, there is a deep confusion going on here between the properties of things within the universe and the properties of the universe itself. It is one thing to say that the universe contains objects that have sentience and the various other 
properties that you mentioned. Of course it contains objects that, that have sentience. We are among those objects. So are dogs. So are chimpanzees. The universe contains sentience. The universe is not sentient. This is the one thing, Deepak, you seem not to understand. You're constantly confusing explanations at the level of what goes on inside the universe with the universe itself. It's not enough to say the universe contains sentience, contains purpose, etc. And say, therefore, the universe is sentient. The universe is purposeful. Evolution, you say, has a purpose, diversity, because what we see is diversity. Of course what we see is diversity. That's the consequence of evolution. But you mistake when you think Time. that evolution is Time. driven towards it. Time is over. How Un much applause. time do I have One. to respond? How sure. much time? I would just add to that that um, the, the science of any uh, one century is going to be superseded by the science of future centuries, such that if somebody from, say, the Middle Ages were to come, were to be brought back by a time machine to, to now, they would find mobile phones and, and uh, computers and, and uh, jet airplanes. They would be indistinguishable from magic. They would appear to be supernatural. Yep. So I am a materialist. I don't believe there is anything supernatural. But don't think of that as a denigration of the natural, because if you were to come back in 500 years' time, you wouldn't have seen nothing yet. The, the physics, the engineering, the biology of 500 years' time will be so far advanced over today's that we might well fall on our knees and worship it as supernatural, but it wouldn't be. It would be the evolved uh, natural. The question is not that whether is true. individual people who happen to be religious or who happen not to be religious are good or bad. Uh, the question is whether religion itself is. I think there are aspects of religion which are bad in, in themselves. I think that the idea of blind faith, believing something without evidence, and sheltering behind the right to hold faith, uh, such that you can justify doing bad things because your religion, your faith tells you it's the right thing to do. Many, many good and righteous people who believe themselves to be good and righteous have done terrible things precisely because they believe that they're doing it for their God. So faith, blind faith, can have that bad effect. Uh, for myself as a scientist, I'm accustomed to saying that the things I really object to about religion is that it teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding, teaches us to be satisfied with pseudo-explanations which are really not explanations at all, things that sound good, things that sound like an explanation but which really aren't, which appeal to the emotions but don't actually explain anything. So I think that religion in that sense can be the enemy of science, the enemy of truth. But this evening I'm reflecting more that what may really be the enemy of truth and the enemy of science is willful obscurantism, whether it comes from religion or not. The, the measure of the, fac the factuality of uh, evolution is the same as in any other science. Um, some of the things that scientists have found are found with great confidence. Scientists are always open to uh, the possibility of being proved wrong at some point in the future, but there are some things that seem at, at any one stage in history far better demonstrated than others. Um, the fact of evolution is about as well demonstrated as anything we know. It is absolutely certain by the normal standards, the same kind of standards as we are certain that um, the earth rotates and, and the sun doesn't go around the earth. Yeah, that's something I want to tackle real quick also. Um, I was having a debate with somebody before and they were using a lot of arguments that, well, one, I wasn't making. It seemed like they were more having an argument about science itself rather than uh, discussion with me <laughs> so and they kept on coming back to this idea that like science was trying to hold back discovery and 
it was it's almost like science is this giant organization that's going out of their way to suppress anything that might go against it but the whole point of science is the idea of critique and skepticism in order for something to even be accepted into science it has to be put through peer review journals and things like that and the whole point of a peer review journal is so that people can get it test it and verify for themselves whether or not what the person that's making the claim is actually like telling the truth about if you put it in a peer review journal and people will discover that they're not getting the same results as you then it's not accepted through science that's how science works that's the reason why a lot of the religious things like creationism and uh well, a bunch of ideas that people in religions tend to have, like that's the reason why science it doesn't work or it doesn't get put into science because when it's peer reviewed, it doesn't go through. That's the reason why religion doesn't seem to be able to crack into science. And the people think, and the religious people think that oh, it's just a conspiracy and they're trying to get rid of religion. And it, like, no, the reason it's not going through is because it's not going, it's not working. That's the reason why it's not going through. If you can find some way to verify your claims and it's demonstrable and like is falsifiable, but we keep coming to the same exact conclusion and it always goes the way that you said it went, then it would be put in. There'd be people getting Nobel prizes all over the place for religious discoveries. The problem is it doesn't ever seem to hold water. Um, that's Formally, we have to say, well, that, that's a hypothesis that might one day be disproved, but we all know that it won't be. And evolution has now come into that category. I don't mean that Darwin's theory of natural selection, as, at least as the only driving force of evolution, um, that uh, probably should be treated as slightly more uncertain. But the fact of evolution itself, by which I mean the fact that all living creatures that have ever been looked at on this planet are cousins sharing a common ancestor, that is uh, as, as secure a fact as, as, as any in science. My attitude to science is that we are fundamentally trying to understand how things work. Science is very difficult. It's very difficult to understand how things work. The hard problem of consciousness has been mentioned, the problem of the origin of the universe, the problem of the origin of life, the problem of how life has this uncanny appearance of, of being designed, the size of the universe. The... I'm gonna go back a little bit. I just paused for a second. I'm just just to quickly, quickly clarify. Another thing people that are religious tend to make a mistake about is they think that okay, well, if you if the universe wasn't created by the Big Bang and um, like so, a lot of scientific discoveries like evolution and stuff. If all that's fake, then that means God's real. No. Even if overnight let's say evolution becomes disproven they find some evidence that completely shatters evolution or the theory of evolution entirely um and let's say at the same time they discover something that shatters the the big bang theory also like all that just completely gets thrown into the trash that does not equal therefore god the pro i think the problem is a lot of times religious people look at stuff as like a uh a or b answer like if it's not a then it has to be b because there's only two options but the problem is there are more than two options there are literally like thousands of possibilities so if the if the multiple choice is a through z and we discover that a isn't the right answer it doesn't automatically mean that q is the right answer like you have to go through and make sure you verify each and every one before you can figure out whether it's true or not so just because Big Bang, if the Big Bang Theory doesn't exist, then that doesn't mean that, okay, we just jump to F and that's the right answer. No, it's more possibilities. <laughs> I think that's the reason why so many religious people tend to jump to from one to other. I used to do that when I was religious. I used to think, okay, well, if that's not the case, then it's obviously this. Scale of the universe. Oh, uh, one second, I still want to go back. <laughs> go back a little bit further. Due to science is that we are fundamentally trying to understand how things work. Science is very difficult. It's very difficult to understand how things work. The hard problem of consciousness has been mentioned, the problem of the origin of the universe, the problem of the origin of life, the problem of how life 
has this uncanny appearance of, of being designed. The size of the universe, the scale of the universe, uh, how embryology works, these are all deeply difficult questions. They require hard scientific work. And in all cases, I think I'm right in saying that scientific work consists of explaining complicated things in terms of the interactions of their parts or of simpler things. So we always try to explain complex things in terms of simpler things. We do not resort to magical language. We do not snow our audience with highfalutin sounding words that don't actually mean anything. We use words that actually have meaning. We use uh, expressions that can be tested. We work hard at understanding the universe in terms of its component parts. We don't invent superarching entities which have no explanation in themselves. We don't invoke ideas like the universe has consciousness, the universe has awareness, atoms have awareness. If we have a difficult problem like awareness, we explain it in terms of the interactions between small parts working together in ways that scientists understand. If Freeman Dyson ever said atoms are aware, then he's wrong. I don't think he said it. I think he should sue you. <laughs> Although I can't recall ever having kissed a photograph, I have wept when reading poetry, when listening to music. I think that those on this side have come to rather resent the suggestion that religion has a monopoly on emotion, on poetry. <laughs> on sympathy, on empathy. Everybody in this room, I dare say, has felt deep grief at the sight or the thought of a suffering individual somewhere in the world, maybe even of another species. That does seem to be something in humanity, to feel empathy with suffering. And as a Darwinian, I can offer explanations for that. I won't do it now because there isn't time. But it is a travesty that has somehow become widely accepted that if you throw out religion, you throw out the Good Samaritan, you throw out weeping at a sonnet of Shakespeare or at a Schubert quartet. It has nothing whatever to do with religion in the sense of the supernatural. Of course, you can redefine religion as covering all these uh, emotional, artistic aspects. And in that case, of course, there's no contest. But I suggest that that's confusing and that we need to define religion as belief in something supernatural. You get your beliefs not from evidence, but from faith, from revelation, from tradition, from scripture, from authority. Now, all those are very bad reasons to believe anything. Evidence is the only reason to believe something. And that's the second point that I want to make in closing. Uh, but the first one, the, the main one I, I want to make is that uh, we are all in this together. We are all uh, capable of the same kinds of emotions. We're all capable of wanting to free the slaves and all the things, all the good things that have been talked about. Whether we're religious or not, uh, you cannot give religion the credit for any of those things. They are a part of humanity, the good things of part of humanity, just as the bad things are part of humanity, whether you are religious or not. No. Um, now this video was pretty good. Now, I've heard conversations that Richard Dawkins have had where he has been a little bit more savage with his comebacks and things like that. Um, this video didn't really have those in it, but like I said, this is a series of videos, so it's possible it might be in some of the other videos. So I encourage you to go check out the other parts and uh, see if you can find some other clips that might also interest you. Um, 
Richard Dawkins himself, he comes off as somebody that doesn't really... Uh, it's like he can be savage, but most of the time he doesn't really choose to. He tends to be very by the book and straight laced when it comes to his arguments. He's not as in your face with it as like Matt Dillahunty or as like sarcastically brilliant as Christopher Hitchens or thing, things like that. Like he tends to be very by the book. Like this is the truth and you're an idiot if you believe otherwise. Like that's, <laughs> that's kind of how he uh, goes about it. Um, yeah, I, I and I am no by no means on these guys levels. I'm, but if I ever studied, I don't I, won't, I don't think I would ever want to be somebody up there like this. I don't I don't really think that would be something I'd be interested in. Because I like I've said before, I just have no faith in humanity. I don't. <laughs> I, like you can get up there and talk all you want. In my mind, it it's never going to really change anything. You might be able to change some people's minds and that could be very mean, meaningful as well. I would hope that I have managed to change someone's mind myself, but it I don't really have a lot of faith in humanity. People are stupid. And I don't mean stupid like, oh, they believe in religion, because I don't believe that you have to be stupid to believe in religion. I think that religion is just something that tends to grab onto people when they're at a young age or at a vulnerable period in their lives, and it's just something that kind of just develops. You don't have to be stupid or something like that like I don't believe that but I believe that when I say stupid I'm talking about people believe stuff without I mean just just think about Facebook and things like that how people will sit there and look at a news article and, or something and just automatically believe it's true just because it says it like I remember there was an article going around that said that there was this like fat dude in Houston and he uh, cannibalized like 20 some people and he killed like a, a bunch of people and stuff like that. And then you go to the comment section and people are like, oh man, that's crazy. I can't believe this happened. It's, saying that. it's like, did nobody bother to click onto the link and see that the website that posted the article is a, a, a satire site? Like nobody bothered to click and check it out. Everybody just automatically believed it. That, that's the type of stuff that I mean when I say lose faith in humanity. Like people believe stupid stuff and don't bother to look more into it. <laughs> like that that's it so um hopefully someday my faith in humanity will be restored matter of fact maybe i have to watch a video about that i know they have faith in humanity restored compilations out there i might have to find a good one but uh anyway that's been this video if you want to try to get in contact with me in some other social media platform you can find me on these places um i do ask if you have requests or anything like that you uh Try to keep it on uh, to Twitter, um, mainly because the way um, Instagram works, it's kind of like stuck in, like only way you can really contact me is through DMs, and I don't really want my DMs to be completely bloated with requests or anything like that. So if you have a request for me, try to leave it on Twitter. Um, normally, whenever I am streaming something, if you give me a super chat of $5 or more, I would, requ I would react to a request immediately. I'll just put you right at the top of the list. I don't have a way of doing that. Somebody recently asked me about a request and I will plan on doing it, but I have to come up with some other system because I don't want, I want there to be a way that I, I, don't, I don't want it to be hidden. I want, I want to make sure everybody knows that this is uh, like something I was paid for. <laughs> so, Anyway, that's been this uh, video. Like I said, if you want to try to follow me on any of these places, whether it's Twitch, which I will be streaming again very soon, whether it's Instagram, where I I post. I don't post a lot, <laughs> but I do post on Instagram. And Twitter, which I'm the most active of the three. Then you can find me on these places. But uh, anyway, that's been this video. I'm Devon Da Vinci. I look forward to seeing you guys on my next video. Until then, I'm going to give you the deuces, and hopefully you've just been a little bit more enlightened. Deuces.